fire for the first time. Thanks yeah, to yeah. I like it. And you know why? Because I think Team Nut had these team fights on lock. And if you're rocking and dominating the team fights, you're going to get a Punisher, uh, sorry, a uh, Protector after Protector after Protector, and you can snowball like crazy. Although I do want to say this, Tetra, I think at the midseason brawl, we saw this, um, you know, um, much more commonly. Teams have found really good ways to shut down the early value from a Protector. Um, teams have gotten much better defending and keeping the experience gap low. Very true, but he's still very deadly. Protectors Absolutely. are still scary. Just the most misnamed hero uh, objective in the game. <laughs> because, yes, it protect, but it mostly attack. And it's pretty scary when it does. <laughs> yes, absolutely true. Um, right, here we go. So what are we going to see here? RPG didn't really make it through with that full aggression. A very antique, rusty style as well with Sonya Grayman. You mentioned it before, even uh, seeing the whole draft, right? It looked so 2017. Yeah. I mean, I really thought they'd dive through. That's my second time that I've been proved wrong about dive comps. I've, I guess dive comps are still pretty difficult to execute in general, so I need to start taking that into account. Yeah. So they're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to pick a little more according to the current meta or find their own way with something that works. Team Nut. Are they going to ban the Alex Drasse again? No, this time they're going to go for Genji. Their opponents are first Reasonable. picking this time around. Is it the Alex Drasse immediately? Another good map for Alex Drasse, basically. But the Tracer, Tracer is making it through. All right, so the Chicken Tracer returning once again. I like it. Indeed. The question is, are we going to see a Tass star again? Perhaps uh, mm. stealing stolen away by Team Nut, Tass Hanzo or something like that mm -hmm. pretty early. You could also run it with a Mediv instead of the Tassadar, right? You give a little bit of shielding and protection this way. Uh, we know that Saw plays a lot of Mediv. Didn't look good last time, but maybe they can work it, make it work this time around. And already the Bunker with Blaze being deployed. Of course, when you have these high burst abilities like the Pulse Bomb by Tracer, you just walk into the bunker and all the damage is going to be negated. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You've taken two heroes who were great with Tracer, the Malfurion and the Blaze. Yeah. That extra protection is pretty good. But like you said, the, also the protection for the Pulse Bomb is pretty dope. So nice opening here by Team Nut, not over committing to anything. They're just picking solid heroes to begin with. Couldn't have said it better myself. So how much do they want to commit to this Tracer pick RPG, that is? Uh, Malfurion, the best support still for a Tracer, uh, picked by their opponents. Uh, you could, of course, go for the Decker, but you sometimes encounter uh, the same issue you have with heroes like Genji, them being too far away from the potions or just not running that path. But up to this point, Decker is sitting at 100% win rate. And even these uh, problems that a Decker could have in theory don't seem to really bother him in reality. But nope, they go for their own style. They stick to the Tassar, they stick to the rather old school round. Let's see if it's gonna work out. Yeah, keeping it normal. Nothing out of the ordinary or special, at least for the moment, with the Muradin and the Tassadar. So with we still need some area control, I think. Like Psy Storm's okay, but uh mm -hmm. Blade, but Blades of Malfurion are a lot better at controlling yeah. areas, zoning roots, zoning slows, charging into choke points. Blaze is fantastic on this map. But they still, uh, Team Nut could even just go a little bit deeper in terms of whatever assassins they pick. But RPG, they need something. Right now, they've gone very team fight heavy. Now, as a variant main, this is my dream scenario. That would be my dream scenario. On the side of Team Nut, going for the variant here, Shattering Thor at level 13, deny any value from the Tassadar whatsoever and also have a nice taunt available for tracer and then you go overpowered level one you're gonna hit those heroic strikes like crazy uh the sergeant hammer band might look crazy at first glance look at fei Yi. he's actually having a little bit of a smile there because maybe team nud did practice the gen g style um in scrims you know you never know these teams probably have yeah. way more insight about the play styles than we do so uh i mean Hammer is very good against Tracer. It True. Pings her as she comes in. The ability to dance away from Muradin pretty easily with Siege Tactics. Hammer is good. So it was a solid ban. Who would have thought that we would have uh, that we would say this at any given point in the future? Hammer, solid ban. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Yeah. Hammer meta. Um, ha yeah. Imagine speaking to yourself last year and going. Um, oh yeah, the games. Uh, the games in a year from now are really good. Like we're seeing, like 
lightning breath sergeant hammer compositions uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man Crazy. yeah it's true though <laughs> you know that speaks uh, but i mean in the, in the case of sergeant hammer it does because the hero wasn't touched in ages but um in terms of diablo it speaks for the work blizzard does you know uh, sometimes the rework exactly. really comes into effect and uh boosts other abilities that weren't really seen before uh, I'm already excited to see the new Jimmy and the new Osmo rework coming into play because both heroes are going to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a change in play style. You know, especially Osmo Dan moving away from that split pusher, becoming more of a team fight based hero. Uh, mixed opinions on those, but hey, that's that's the case with every rework. You see it in the video, and you're like, I I like it or I don't like it, and then in the game it turns out to be oftentimes quite different. I still think Exploit Weak Shot should have been given some pepper. Either way, Junkrat coming in here. So a little bit of Siege behind the consistent damage of Tracer. And the Deckard coming in. Can he keep his 100% win rate? We shall see. And now Team Nut. A final piece of damage. Something to deal with this Tracer. Something to blow her up once she is taunted. Because they will not have much time. Yeah, they also need something to pressure... Um... Uh, the the Decker Kane. I think in both games that Decker was deployed, he was not really attacked a whole lot. Now the Warriors are looking fine already, yeah. Garrosh and Blaze, but they need to have a good assassin, maybe something. Yes, and that's exactly what I like there. You have follow up CC, strong burst damage. You can really mess with Decker's positioning, uh, and I'm excited. I want to see that. I also want to see that the Alarak is potentially great against Tracer. If you can get it while she's locked down by Garrosh and get the silence, it's absolutely insane. It's also pretty decent against Tassadar, who all mm -hmm. of his sustain is very much ability-based, so any kind of CC against him is good. So, yeah, the Alarak's really interesting, but potentially really solid. Yeah, and there is a lot of heroes, actually, that if they end up getting swapped and silenced, uh, they will struggle heavily. Tassadar, if he can't use his dimensional shift in time, then he's going to get popped uh, quite heavily. Same goes for Tracer. Same goes for Junkrat and Deckard. There's basically four squishies in there that if they ever let their guard down, they're going to get punished heavily. So who, who are you giving sway to, Tetra? Do you think uh, RPG has what it takes to make it a 1-1? I mean, Deckard 100% win, right? <laughs> but I... If there's there, one the team that can break it, it is RPG. The burden of execution is very much on Team Nut. Their composition, in terms of killing the Tracer especially, relies so much on landing combos that I'm going to lean towards RPG. I think the Nut might have bitten off more than they can chew here. Oh, I'm loving that analogy, but I believe in my Nuts, and I think they're going to make it through and get this 2-0 on the way. So RPG, here we go in the blues once again. Chicken on that Tracer. We see MJ on the Decker Kane, we see Saw playing Junkrat this time. C on the tank on Murden, and last but not least, we have Tasser in the mix as well. And on the right, no on Alarak, FS on Garrosh, Fee on Blaze, Oasis on Hanzo, Atui on Malfurion, and together they are Team Nut. All right, so here we go. They're going to clash in the middle. Now, the first time we see uh, Volska Foundry, and uh, uh, today at least, and uh, Chinese teams, they. They have their weaknesses, you know, in the macro plays. So sometimes you will see an overcommitment on those uh, protector capture points, and uh, sometimes it would have been better for them to actually go for a little bit of split pushing instead. So let's see if the teams have learned, if they have improved a little bit on that regard. Already we see Chicken being a little feisty there, protected by Tassadar shields. He can actually play pretty recklessly without getting punished immediately. Look at that delay. Look at Sa uh, breaking the rotation coming in from Team Nut. It's pretty effective here, as we see. Talent-wise, we're pretty normal here, although I do not believe that's given some English. Uh, no, it's not. Engli so the... that is extra wound timers, I believe. Yeah, Great the... for zoning on this map. Hmm. Give us some English has the orange uh, icon. Yes, so... and then the other one, which I don't know the name of, is the bounce one, which is purple. So yes, this is uh, extra round timers, which basically means that the bombs take longer to explode. They don't travel further, they just take longer to explode. Yeah. Meaning that they can zone out choke points pretty effectively. 
<laughs> Chicken already using the pulse bomb to get this mercenary camp super quickly. I like it. Already strong combo though onto Junkrat. He is getting rooted right now and he can't use his concussion mine to leap to safety. Beautiful pickup here. Beautiful kill by Team Nut. Those kills against the Junkrat are not easy to execute. And look at the decision making. Immediately going for the healing camp already. This Taking what they learned in their so first good. series too hard that they seem to struggle once they uh with making the most of the kills they get this time not wasting any time getting a first blood and then immediately grabbing the healing pulse the biotic emitter yeah it's so strong already we see one turret and the healing pulse available for team nat so this should give them a huge advantage over their opponents when it comes to fighting for the first protector and it wouldn't even surprise me if RPG, unless they get like a really good engage. Never mind, known problem. The tracer body blocks are real. The concussion oh, right. mine is as well. And boo goes Alric right down the alley. That was beautiful. Now they're looking for Saw though. Counter kill picked up by FS. So nicely done there. But yeah, that was beautiful. And while Alarak's dead, he's not going to be getting stacks. He's gone double stacks with extended lightning and negative char negatively charged. So this is going to buy them some time and reduce, uh, slow down Alarak really coming online. Yeah, you don't see a Tracer body block every day. <laughs> it's yeah. definitely cool to see. It's not even that easy to do when you are like a ranged hero and you want to go for a point-blank melee body block. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world. So kudos to Chicken for pulling that one off. Both teams very evenly though, and you can already see the nasty business of Decker Kane spreading potion, uh, potions all over the place, basically granting immediate sustain. Now, FS on the Garage getting flipped over. He does have the Healing Pulse as well, so they definitely don't want to get uh, locked down and uh, focused on. The timing begins to tick up. C goes pretty deep, eats the stuns, and the silences, mm -hmm. but is still able to jump away because he's booty, because he's burned and he's tanky. As to back up, though, those potions continuing to come in as quick as possible. Charging oh, up, though. C, struggling. Yeah, the timer is charging up in favor of Team Nut, and you can really see how much respect RPG is paying towards that healing pulse, right, Tetcher? They uh, refrain from uh, committing super hard in this until uh, they find a good opening, but uh, there's so much healing potentially already for Atui and his boys, and I don't think RPG is going to pull the trigger and fully commit to this. Chicken eats even more hands of damage to get to that heal uh, healing potion here, here, but now they're beginning to move in. FS taking a fair amount of damage, gets the toss tosses, C onto mm -hmm. chicken there. PP. And looks like we're going to have a quick pause. Ooh, that was actually a good moment to go for a pause because it looks like both teams uh, are just, you know, staring at each other. They're trying to poke each other down. Um, that would have certainly been a little bit more problematic if it had been uh, in the heat of battle. So uh, PP, of course, standing for pause, please. So maybe some of the, some of the computers, some of the hardware is acting up. We're going to find out in a bit. Yeah, we have a like we. I, 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 I've never really thought about just how many just acronyms we have in Heroes of the Storm and in esports in general. Yeah, like I never really worked out what SS means. I never really understood why that was that. Like I know it means when do when do you say missing, SS when someone's missing? Ah, okay. Yeah, miss maybe double S miss. I guess, but I thought it was an acronym kind of thing. Hmm. Either way, that kind of that's like such cool. I mean, there's the obvious ones: G G G L H F, etc. Yeah. Uh, I always keep forgetting. Like I keep forgetting uh, what the acronym S M H stands for. You gotta help me out Shaking on that one. Shaking my head. Sorry. Shaking my head. Shaking my head. I keep forgetting about it. S M H. Yeah, man. So like. <sighs> God. Twitch is gonna be S M Aging at me now for not knowing yes, and remembering. Certainly. <laughs> All right, we're going back to the Chinese caster as well. So that could be either good news, them announcing that the game continues, or it could be uh, slightly worse news. Oh, it's stay safe. Oh, that makes yeah. so much sense. Oh, I've never, no I've never known that. Thank you, chat. Let's go. <laughs> Appreciate that. Man, I always knew Twitch chat knows best. They know everything. They do. Excellent. I learn. See, you can't. You don't just come here for entertainment and wonderful HTC China games. Sometimes you do get educated. All right. Someone immediately saying it's not stay safe. <laughs> Either way, I like stay safe. I'm keeping it. And we're going to make it stay it, safe so. now. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. There so, yeah, we go. 
All right. Eventually. <laughs> eventually. We, eventually, there we go, once we get back into the game. Yeah, uh, the the tournament, uh, the league has been going pretty well up to this point. I don't think they're going to have, uh, hopefully, they're not going to have any major issues now. Um, let's see. I'm trying to read facial expressions right now on Q, but she always looks a little uh, confused. I think it's in her nature. Possibly. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Still looking cute while confused, though. Both of them are. It's good. Uh, their headsets are interesting. Very, very blue. This, and this very is the huge. Of, this is the fun of clean feed, where we get to we get to <laughs> we get to talk about caster style and and uh, set up an equipment. So yeah, when you very do, big headsets. When you do offline events, do you prefer um, headsets or do you prefer the in ear uh, microphones that basically go around your ear? Oh no, I hate those. My you ears, hate those. Like they just they just dig into my ear and like. They hurt a lot, uh, <laughs> like the ones we had a mid-season brawl. The first bit, the bit in, in the studio uh, area, in the yeah, stu in the mm -hmm. studio, yeah, those ones. I do not like those. Uh, the big, the small little headphone things, like uh, I'm not going to say brand names just in case. Uh, but the, the the headphone things we get instead that we get at the majority of events on the caster desk, those I like. I like them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're usually they're usually really good and comfy. I mean, they're designed to be worn for several hours, so they better be comfy. Yeah. Um. Have you, have you ever tried to cut? Have you ever had to cast with a handheld mic? Oh, yes, before? I did. <laughs> uh, I was doing an Overwatch event in Germany once uh, when Overwatch was a brand new game uh, and just released, and they had some issues with the headsets. So here's what I had to do in the first game like it was on, uh, on the PS4, and I basically had to do observing and casting at the same time with a controller, and I Ooh. had no idea. How to do this? I think that was the worst observing anyone has ever done in the history of Overwatch. <laughs> and then during the second game, they told me to cast with a hand mic. And I was like, I only got two hands. Well, I can't I do controller. Have to observe. Camera how, and... how do you expect me yeah. to do <laughs> tape it to the so side? So I actually had someone holding the mic in front of my mouth the entire time. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes much more sense. But yeah, hand, handheld mic casting, not fun. <laughs> it's I good for interviews, though. I like it. It's good for what? Sorry. For interviews, it's nice. You have, you have oh, has a little yeah, bit of I mean, interaction. Headset head interviews are a little bit weird, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, having something to hold in your hand as a player is pretty good. Shout out to Heku, by the way, who did a really good job at the uh, yeah. mid-season brawl. Uh, we were, we were uh, memeing the players in terms of, like, <laughs> you could see, you could tell, you could almost uh, see the differences in the regions as to how they reacted to being handed a mic. Yes. Like, uh... When the uh, when the EU people got it, they usually just didn't even touch the mic. Sometimes they would gesture to take it, and if it was given to, they take it. If not, they would put their hands back down. Uh, the American, uh, the Americans, they would all do the same. Uh, the Chinese teams tried to avoid the mic as much as possible. Uh, they also didn't get many interviews, uh, <laughs> so we didn't get to see them as much. Korea, both hands on the mic, even <laughs> if it's not given to them, just both hands on the mic every time. Gotta carry the mic as hard as you carry in game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, we found, we found that amusing, being able to spot the differences like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have no update, by the way, what's going on. Uh, maybe yeah. uh, something uh, something broke down uh, quite significantly here. Hopefully not. Indeedy. What is, your, what is the coolest story you've got to tell us that's safe for sharing from the mid-season brawl? The safe for sharing from the mid-season brawl? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's getting hard um, already. <laughs> no, I was, no, I was just, the way I said that. I'm just like the safe to share. Uh. As if there's all not safe for work stuff going on behind the scenes, <laughs> but there completely isn't. Um, hmm, it's quite. A, I mean, there's quite. I a think few. None I think I saw exciting. another picture of Dread eating chicken nuggets. Oh yes. What's the story um, of that? So we had we had a, we had a there was catering at the event, mm -hmm. but the food that we got on one of the days for like the morning food was a little bit we didn't really fancy it in terms of casting food. Like it was a little little greasy, which is not good for casting on. Yeah. Um. So th we had staggered call times. So what ended up happening uh, ended up happening is we messaged into the caster group because right next to our hotel. <laughs> there was a place that sells chicken nuggets. Nice. Um, people can see the tweet. They know the company, but we're obviously not going to try not to mention companies here. Um, so we so we just put in the group uh, group chat. 
hey, I think it was Skimmy and Jay Howe who were coming in late, but it was like, just messaged them, just like, hey, before you come, could you like bring chicken nuggets? And they were like, yep, sure, how many? Ended up being 60. Uh, <laughs> so they just Healthy show up amount. Like a, yeah, 60 <laughs> chicken nuggets that were shared amongst the casters. Nice. And even yeah. Dread couldn't and then resist. Dread recreated, recreated a picture uh, uh, from a couple other events of just him covered in chicken nugget boxes. One of one of the most handsome of memes memes we have in Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. No story. Uh, story wise, other than a uh, Gilly getting hairstyles mixed up, which was quite fun. Uh, as um, long as they like didn't we cut it. No, no, not, not her own hairstyle. We were talking about uh, just old pictures and just oh, uh, what we did before Heroes okay. and stuff. And I showed like my picture from Three Pack Bucharest, mm -hmm. where I had hair down to here, kind of thing, like almost mullet size. Uh, Don't you like, want to go back to that uh, at some point? Not really. I mean, if I do, I want to grow out even longer, so it's actually properly long. And, and this mullet. mullet ain't hurt nobody. Um, but yeah, the I had that. And we were talking about that, and uh, Gilly forgot the name of a mullet. And said, uh, "Oh yeah, it's like a mohawk. Part, uh, business in the front, party in the back." And my response was, <laughs> "Business in the front, mohawk." Uh, and got very confused. Uh, but yeah, it was just a misspeak. Um, what else? I mean, we played the. We played. Uh, I don't know what the I don't know if there's like an official name in the game, uh, but the game where you have one or two people in the middle and two people have to throw the ball and if it gets intercepted at any point, then that person, the person yeah, who goes in the middle. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know the name of that game. Isn't it like uh, monkey play, in the middle? No, something like that. Uh, but we played we played that like a uh, me, Jay, How, Dread, and Wolf. Turns out though the pool was really deep at one end, so unless it was me or Jay How up the end. It was a little bit difficult because <laughs> it was super deep. Jay was uh, just monster block everyone. Oh, uh, I think we're getting was, ready though, guys. I think we're going back into the game. Advantage. Oh no, they had to do a remake. Oh on a different no, map? they probably had a reconnect bug or something yeah, along those lines. But we're on a different lines. map now, huh? But we're on a different map now. Um, uh, yes. I think I know what happened, but uh. It's probably Nate, related to Volskaya. Either way, either way, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Battlefield of Eternity. We are heading into the draft, and we're going to get right. this going. Hashtag remake. Here we go. At least we get to see the action again from the beginning, oh, from rah. the get-go. <laughs> All right. Um, team Not Now, once again, with first pick, first band. We saw that previously before. Um, and, uh, I mean, Battlefield is a nice map, too. I like it. Just saw a pretty epic match on that one. This is true. We have had several great matches on this, especially even at the MSB. We had several great matches on, uh, on this map. It's a cool map. But either way, with Diablo banned out, what else are we going to see? Maiev, very open. They may be even just banning out Hanzo. Mm. Might have been an effective way to do it. Yeah, Hanzo, I think, I, I mean, it makes so, so, so much sense, right? You can... Uh, basically get rid of the strongest PvE character in the game right now, especially on uh, this map, on Battlefield. I really wonder when we're going to see uh, the first Lunara, because not only on this map, but in general, I think the hero is really powerful right now, if played correctly. So what do they go for? They go for the Tracer ban. So she's okay in terms of race, so this is reasonable, and of course, is just a really solid hero in general. Remove it away from Chicken. He's been leaning on it quite a bit. Tried to play it last game, but got denied. Indeed. Indeed. So Garrosh ready. Uh, that's a little mean, of course. That's a little cheeky by Team uh, Not Right. So knowing they're, they were going to go first pick uh, Tracer potentially. But in their defense, yeah. I think a Tracer ban is nothing out of the ordinary, right? Especially yeah. on... I, I guess use all the information you have. Yeah. I mean, the enemies could have done the same thing, right? Exactly. They, they, they could have easily reacted in that kind of way. And in fact, they have already grabbed themselves the Genji of RPG. So now, Team Nut, they need some kind of race. Once again, I think Hanzo will probably be fairly high priority. There he is. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Hanzo thrall. and Thrall. And you know, Tetra, when I say Thrall, you say... Thrall. No! <laughs> you say Phoenix! <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I usually pick Diablo <laughs> Phoenix, so Diablo was banned. But yeah, that also works. Yeah. Uh, that would make them triple damage, but that's fine. Thrall is uh, pretty much a solo lane, the second frontliner in terms of Skyle. Skyle? Style? 
All right. So, uh, all right. So that's pretty cool. We could have a potential Phoenix synergy if RPG doesn't pick it away. Thrall, of course, also a formidable soul laner. Could fill that spot very nicely with Echo of the Elements. We hardly see any Crash Lightning Thrall anymore. It used to be a go-to, you know, uh, when it, the talent was dealing more damage in the past. On this map, it used to be the best one, actually. Um, but not really anymore. Although I still like to run it myself in Hero League every time. So um, if you see me in your Team League uh, or Hero League game, you better prepare. Because I'm here to show you that Crash Lightning isn't dead yet. With Tyrael and Muradin, though, two heroes could be potentially quite good against Crash Lightning. One with consistent self-sustain and one with shields for everybody! <laughs> Hooray! So, very interesting. This does likely mean, though, that we're going to see maybe Tyrael as the solo laner for RPG here. Hmm. How peculiar. You know, uh, Tyrael, there are stranger uh, solo laners. I think Tyrael's solo laning capabilities are kind of underestimated. There is a certain build that you can actually go for. Uh, Divine Vigor, for example, allows you to self-sustain yourself quite nicely. Even the Ardent Defender at level 1 can maybe get some work done. It's been buffed multiple times to keep you sustained. Uh, against the Thrall, though, I still think it's going to be a hard challenge. Mm, we'll have to see. In terms of solo laning, like, like you said, it's going to be pretty difficult, but... All he has to do is to hold the lane. That's yes. the whole joy of Tyrael. You never really have to win, you just have to survive. And that is pretty good. As long as you manage your mana and pretty much just use it for shielding, just to lay the lane mm -hmm. and hold it as long as you can, you can usually get pretty good value. And it's not like on Brax's holdout in which the uh, laning phase lasts several minutes, five, seven, ten minutes sometimes, even if the game is really even. On Battlefield of Eternity, you sooner or later are forced to leave your lane, right? Uh, because you can't yeah. let that immortal go and fight uh, four versus five usually so uh you're right sometimes you can actually go for a laner that is just supposed to hold the lane but is actually good in team fights which Tyrael without a doubt is Deckard Kane returns as does Johanna very yeah. poke friendly composition from team nut mm -hmm. they have Hanzo they have Thrall and then Johanna just stands in front and makes sure no one gets to those two really solid opening so far or well, first most of the draft uh, now the question is Depending on what RPG sees here as a last pick coming for Team Nut, if it really ends up being a Phoenix, for example, I could imagine a Judgment Tyrael. It all depends as well on uh, which heroes they get as a follow-up. Judgment Tyrael could be interesting. Who do you dive, though? Just Deckard or Hanzo? Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, if they have a Phoenix. Like, you can go for Hanzo, Phoenix, Deckard. There's a lot of juicy okay. targets. I can see the idea. Um... Yeah, it depends what RPG, Assassin RPG goes for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If they have someone who obviously can follow up on it, then... I mean, Muradin already can, the Genji can. Uh, Malfurion. Okay. And... Ming. That's potentially a follow-up, but it's also really decent in Mortal Race, which is good. Yes. So, potentially, um, if we I go uh, for a Judgment here, we would have a double reset if that kill comes through. If it gets through. That's true. It's certainly a commitment, but it's possible... And Sankon Li Ming isn't the most value. It's decent value, but it's not the most value as opposed to like a melee hero who's going to just fight inside mm -hmm. it. Yeah, definitely. Don't forget, guys, it's uh, Battlefield of Trinity now. No remake on Volskaya, so Li Ming makes a lot more sense here. It's still one of her strongest battleground. Um, as Tetru said, strong poke. You can go for a missile build. You can go for a standard Calamity build. Um, just don't go orb build. It's no. But I like circles. <laughs> uh, I think we actually encountered two uh, potential baits already today. No convection. We have learned that one. We learn. And then no orb built leaming. This is true. The, those are some of the baits. But also, Crash Lightning. That's a bait. No. Valera. Oh! Looky that's look at that. Let's have a look at this backline here for LPG. Uh, yeah, squishy. Um, so, this could be a problem. A pretty severe problem. We saw how well this was able to be used at the MSB, where it was pretty much one-shotting even Muradins. Speaking of Muradins, it's on the other team. This could be terrifying. Absolutely amazing. And I like this Valera pick. First of all, she could, in theory, become a soul laner. I think soul lane Valera is highly underestimated. But we already have Thrall, right? So she can actually be either a ganker uh, that rotates between bottom and top, 
or part of the four man lane, which against the Genji or the Li Ming is certainly very deadly because these are all squishy heroes. And if you silence them for a couple of seconds, that means no escape tools available at all. And uh, then you only have a Malfurion in the enemy team. You know, it's not the strongest of burst protection. Um, Tetra, how do you like the drafts and uh, why do you like Valera here? I, I think Valera is a home run just due to how squishy the team of RPG is. They have, uh, I mean, Team Nut have such great poke and now an executor. This is a yeah. really good draft by Team Nut. I couldn't agree more, and I'm already excited to see what the Valera can add to the draft of Team Nut. We're going to find it out soon as we go into Battlefield of Eternity here in the Blues. Once again, we have RPG with Chicken on Lee Ming, MJ on Malfurion, Sa plays the Tyrell, C is playing the Muradin, and Genji is being played by Rong. And on the right hand side, this is Team Nut with No on the on the Valera. FS on Johanna Fei is playing the Thrall. Oasis on Hanzo and Atui is playing Deckard Kane. No Crash Lightning, Mr. Kendrick. I shall forgive him this time, simply because uh, Echo of the Elements is also pretty good. And uh, I mean, it looks like uh, Deckard Kane, by the way, switched sides. So the dream of him maintaining this 100% win ratio is still alive. It was a right like the other time. Where's your faith in RPG? I have lost my faith in RPG a long time ago. Uh, they will have to earn my respect again. That's true. I, I think I'm in a similar situation. <laughs> I've been hurt too many times. Uh, Salvation, by the way, for Tyrion. Not going for justice for all. Going with a little bit of self-sustain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. So what this talent does is it actually increases Tyrion's own shielding, not that of his allies. And it gives him a little bit of a heal when that shield gets broken. So, a uh, full self-sustained build from Tyrael. And it already kind of makes me question and wonder uh, whether we're going to see a Judgment uh, pick here. Because on the one hand, you can actually say the more self-sustained Tyrael has, uh, the more he's going to survive after... Oh, look at that. They're timing this. Lyra is jumping over the wall, Surprise. silencing him. Shutting down the escape mechanisms. And Thrall just trying to that. execute him. Didn't work out. That was the try. Faye was attempting oh. to move in and sneakily get him, but mm -hmm. the nice little move up by Sar and C protecting there. This is something that I think a lot of players can uh, probably take away and remember in their own Hero League games. If you're a Genji uh, and you play on Battlefield, you can go for those sneaky assassins on assassina assassinations, excuse me, uh, on those wells, right on the fountains. You can do it in the middle, you can do it in the top lane. The only thing you need to make sure is that you have your escape mechanisms ready when you need it to uh, run away. No starting off with the Crippling Poison here. They're basically the slow on any basic ability, which is pretty good here. So it can be a good setup for all of this extra damage that the rest of the team could do. And of course, just allows Valera to just continue to chase people. Absolutely true. Now we can also see a crazy lane swap here. Tyrael no longer in the solo in the top lane. That uh, duty now lies in C's hand on the Muradin. They're trying to keep that top lane safe inside. You can also see what Rolira is doing, right? She's keeping that bush under control so uh, that any feisty Genji plays will be denied and rejected before they even take place. They're not looking at the forward bush, though, and as such, they do see C and Rong coming in, which will easily be enough to steal the camp. So RPG yeah. picking up this in Paler camp. Team not playing very, very safe here. They are not willing to let themselves get engaged upon. And look at Genji. He's using that opening. Deckard, there's nothing you can do, buddy. And at some point, it just had to fall. It was just a question of time. Well played and very, very cheeky by RPG. Very cheeky indeed. And as such, this is the... They've actually even picked which lane to do that in. You can have a look here. You can see the small icons on the minimap actually show which immortal will spawn where. Now, obviously, RPG are on the angel side, so they killed the one nearest their opponent's immortal. So if their opponent's trying to defend, then they're going to have less sustain because they're fountain available. As right now, FS is in a little bit of trouble, but Iron Skin keeping him alive. FS safe for now. He's Johanna after all. With the Iron Skin, he's hard to take down. But look at Oasis. Already a problem here. Low on mana. So that means no more poke available for the strongest poker that Team Nut has in their ranks. And, uh... I like the way uh, RPG is building up pressure all around the map, stealing uh, mercenaries, uh, destroying wells, and now gaining the advantage here with the Immortal already. It really seems like Team Nut is just a little too slow when it comes to defending uh, their half of the map. But they need to be careful if they are defending. Right now, Silence on to the Serial with the slow as well. Triangle is down, but it's not enough. 
to pick up the kill here. Yeah, now it's interesting to see what Team Nut is going to try to do here. They don't have the classic, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna bust that uh, Immortal down all by myself, right? They have no Lunara, they have no Vala, no Li Ning, so they're going to have to defend until they find an opening, until they kill the opposing side. I don't think they can even afford Hanzo. Um, yeah, Hanzo could be good at that, but I don't know. They're, they're still going to lose it. Lyra is already starting to get a little bit scary, but now Faye in a little bit of trouble. Backing up, gets the heal from Deckard Kane. But yeah, no, bringing out that hemorrhage as well. So now with those slows and the consistent attack damage boost, mm. it's going to get pretty terrifying. But Faye being forced to back up RPG with the first immortal of the game. What can they make out of this? So the problem here, I think, was that if you send Hanzo to clear uh, the immortal all by himself, true, he's very fast at doing that. However, uh, you won't have any more range damage, right? You're going to have four melees, and those are very susceptible to getting poked by the enemy team, especially with the Li Ming and the Genji in there. So uh, it could only, you know, end up in a losing situation here. But let's see how Team Nut can stabilize, or if they can stabilize. But they are already in the bottom. Probably realized, you know what? Thrall is a little better when it comes to poking the enemies down, when it comes to busting uh, down that Immortal. So let's see how much damage they're going to take. What do we see here? Nut looking to move forward, trying to get the opportunity onto the Immortal to burn it down before their four mm -hmm. goes down. And it looks like they might be able to do it. They're going to be, it's going to be very close, but yeah, they should be able to take this down after the minion wave disappearing forces RPG to back up. They just don't feel confident. Yeah. Could easily get them called out of position if they're not careful, so it's a very sensible move. Now, the wave clear was good there by Hanzo and Johanna, keeping the minions at bay. So, in case, or just in case, the enemy team were to invade here, the minions wouldn't soak up the uh, damage from the fort, which is something that's so cool to see in pro play, how uh, PvE units like, let's say, the Broccoli coming in from Malfurion or Anubarak Beetles are oftentimes used aggressively when it comes to invading. Uh, whew, clutch escape I saw, waiting until the last yeah. moment. That was close. Slice and Dice was really allowing Valera to just, sh uh, just shred through Tyrael there. It's only going to get worse. This is exactly what Tyrael's about. Roll completes the stacking quest on his Frostwall. Yeah, very true. That's nice. So less mana uh, costs now and a lower cooldown on the wolf. Uh, could cater towards an alpha uh, wolf later on at 16 for that percentage damage. Be in trouble. Thrall, of course, the self-sustained king, but not this time around. Too early. Yeah, doesn't ha didn't have the possibility to be able to turn that round at least for the moment. Steam now is picking up a mercenary camp in the top lane. This is being mirrored by RPG mm -hmm. in the bottom lane, so both teams could try and get a little bit of split pr uh, split pressure. The difference is RPG already have members up in this top lane to begin burning down that Kazawa camp. Good thing Thrall completed that quest, otherwise he would have lost it and uh, would have tried again. Here we see Nut trying to clear it a little bit. Valera. Uh, we said we like the hero, right? But up to this point, we haven't seen a whole lot of the rogue. Um, it's mostly because RPG is playing very diligently, and neither Li Ming and, nor Genji are making any mistakes in terms of positioning up to this point. Well, Li Ming's not really maximum damage. I mean, for starters, all of her stuff. She's already terrifying. She's always True. terrifying. But the fact is, she's just looking for an opportunity to pick someone off every now and again. Mm -hmm. FS actually sees Li Ming, was alone for a little bit there. I'm sure no would have loved to have been involved in that. But the threat of Le the threat of Valera can sometimes just be enough on its own here. As okay. Oasis oh, has boy. just been absolutely dived. Now knows in trouble as well. <laughs> Able to dash away though. But that was just a, such a casual engage. I didn't even realize it was going on <laughs> that they just walked onto the opponent's side of the map into their Merc camp and just killed off Hanzo. Yeah, the problem was Atui on the support on Deckard. He was nowhere near to even drop a single potion. Uh, normally, the way you want to do it, uh, if you're the support, I think you should drop a couple of potions everywhere so you can ha uh, you can help the ranged assassins. You're probably going to get engaged upon on uh, to stay alive a little more. But the team by Team Nut was uh, spread all over the place, so. They need to really regroup a little more and protect Hanzo, without a doubt their most important member when it comes to racing these immortals. Well, he's alive again. Uh, but they are now on the defense as Valera finds Tyrael, but doesn't look like he, she actually mm. wants to try and get the burst here. Instead, going to delay it out. See, moving very far forward, looking for FS. FS, though, 
trying to turn it around. No has returned to his team very slowly, wrapping around. Yeah, he's going to have to go for a big detour, though. And guess what? Level 10 isn't even here yet. So even if they found a good angle, I don't think they should really give it a shot. Genji going in deep, getting focused, getting taken out almost, but the sanctification is good. No gets dropped super low, but is able to back up. A lot of damage from both sides, but neither one able to pick up a kill. But this has allowed Team Nut to hit level 10. So here's what we're going to do if you're Team Nut, right? You're going to count, okay, cooldown down on Genji, no XD strike, cooldown down on Turial, no sanctification. So you have two major playmakers not available. So this might be the time for um, for Oasis on the Hanzo to maybe drop an arrow, to maybe make an engagement happen, even if it's the Muradin. The silence is here. Here comes a flank from Thrall. And Muradin almost gets out, but still taking huge amounts of damage. They're trying to get Genji, and they do sleep him. And he will survive, though. Even with the silence and the sleep, they can't finish off a Genji. That is not ideal. Yeah, they certainly they certainly tried to get that kill, right? That must have felt a little frustrating. But in the end, they're probably going to be able to save this fort thanks to Hanzo and the combined efforts and the damage. And they got what they wanted. They got a kill. They came back a little bit more in terms of experience. And uh, the team not defense held strong. No cracks this time. Yeah, they're able to hold it together. As even though they've actually uh, been playing still quite well, RPG are not as far ahead as I thought they would be because of some of the fights they've taken have been a little bit wonky. But at least their faults are alive and healthy, as Team Nuts are so much not. Either yeah, way. now on the other hand, you have the exact same problem uh, against Team Nut, right? No heroic abilities ready, bar the uh, Blessed Shield here. Valera in the meantime trying to go for a one versus two. The smoke bomb is ready. They don't see her, but the X strike almost connecting. But Bye. look at the cheeky escape. They're trying to oh. make her. Cheeky <laughs> <sighs> smite picking it up. That was very lucky, actually. But either way, they got her. That was ambitious. Valera can do a lot of damage, but apparently not enough to kill a Kenji from two levels down. Sorry, one Oftentimes, level down. Sometimes ambition leads to ruin, and uh, Valera is certainly going to. I regret that a bold decision, but it's not the end of the world, you know. Uh, this timers are still pretty low here. He's going to be back for the next immortal in time. The bigger problem here for Team Nut is, of course, the ever-expanding uh, gap in experience, right? RPG is definitely starting to take that lead, and on two lane maps, there's only so many lanes you can soak from. That's the big advantage of three lane maps. You have more movement freedom. You have more income of experience here. It's pretty predictable for the enemy team what you're quite kind of up to. It murdered over the wall, tries to go for Thrall. Dragon Arrow does not land, but Faye is sustaining through. Thanks to this earthquake, moving forward, looking for C. Crazy damage, there's the oh silence, and there goes Thrall. Looking for Wrong now, pushing forward, trying to get him into the position as not FS moving forward, looking for Sar as Oasis. Drops some good damage, but it's not enough right now because all the rest of the members are cleaning up yeah. mercenaries. A 2 MVP on that uh, Decker King. Once again, the Emerald, minus 75% healing on that Muradin, which means no healing static value, no protection value from the Malfurion either. And that's how you pop a tank, even if it's Muradin. So let's see, maybe they can go for another kill here. Sa needs to be careful. One silent and he, one silence and he could be next to fall. Positioning is very safe here by Team mm -hmm. Nut. 13 is here. Beginning to move up, like you said, with that 13 now being even. RPG is just more waiting for their members at this point. They've soaked a little bit more XP from that bottom lane, but now they begin to work their way into that defense position and begin to wrap around once again. Now, with the exception of Earthquake, all the heroic abilities are going to be ready. And this time, Atu is here to save Oasis. The potions providing that extra shielding is really keeping him safe and sound against those reckless Genji maneuvers. Wrong, always trying to find that weak spot in the defense of Team Nut. Getting Chicken pretty much poked down himself, though. Right up. Uh oh, uh oh, chicken, chicken, oh. C uh, goes down. I think he actually just blinked into that wow. dragon arrow, but either way, he goes down as Faye begins burning down the immortal. I think you're right. Hansa got the killing blow, right? So <laughs> I think she actually blinked into the uh, dragon's arrow, but anyway, the poison yeah. probably would have finished her off anyways, but definitely a clutch move. Yeah, Valera finally starting to get value almost high enough to one shot, now has strangle. Reduces the hero who she hits spell power for four, for six mm -hmm. seconds, which is pretty wonderful. Yeah. Even if they escape you, you can still try and reduce their value in the team fight, especially someone like Li Ming who relies on uh, resets and getting some good burst damage. 
Silence onto Tyrael. Look at all that burst damage coming through, and Tyrael is no more. A beautiful stay a while and listen as well to slow down the reinitiation. Here comes Li Ming, though. Gets one, gets two, maybe. FS was dropped low. Thrall is out of position. They will get dropped here. Reset wow. again from Chicken. And it's going to be a two for two in this yeah. fight. So now I think RPG needs to be super careful. They have to face a Valera who's very sneaky and who could try to maybe uh, finish off the Immortal. Same goes for Hanzo. Long distance poke. They need to make sure that they have more than just murder defending this. I really think Turil at the very least should also be here. Because look at Hanzo. Arrows after arrows. Valera trying to find an opening, trying to distract even for Hanzo to finish the job. They're trying to at least, but now C Good is in set. the choke point. That's a Valera. That's a Root. That is a nice Dragon Arrow, but not enough. As we yeah. see them turn around, they also find their Fesk to try and pick up another kill here as Chicken gets chunked by Hanzo. But Look at the, the hammers, hammers they're spinning. Has arrived. They're in trouble. FS dropping low. He might get out. X Strike's good. He goes down. Hanzo has one job right now. He needs to finish the Immortal. That's basically what his allies have been dying for. There goes another auto attack. Is he going to make it out alive? The entire squad of RPG is uh, chasing after oh, the oh, number man. one enemy of the state. There we go. Oh, man. Was it worth it, though? I think it was. It was the best thing they could do out of that situation. Yeah, it's not bad. It's going to definitely give them a little bit of counter XP because it should at least get a tower or two if there are any towers left in this lane. Yep. But it allows them to soak XP, allows them to take army. There are towers left in this lane, and as such, the Immortal will certainly get both of them, I would say. Actually, it might be close. They are burning through that really fast. Yeah. They do have quite a lot of PvE yeah, uh, damage available for themselves. By the way, Li Ming went for the standard build. No arcane missiles uh, shenanigans here, so uh, they went for a good old Domin's like Calamity build. Effect. Yeah. So we see Faye hovering around, eats a Storm Bolt to the face. And see, he's on. That must not be enough, even with Ooh! all this. That might be enough. Whoa! Okay. Um. So it wasn't enough until that wide dragon arrow. That'll do it. As we see them burning down the fours for their first war of the game, it comes to the disintegrate to try and burn a little bit of damage, and that fort will not be taken. Good defense by RPG. Absolutely amazing play by Team Nut. From downtown came that dragon's arrow, and there was no way for Murden to make it out of life because who expects to fall down from zero uh, from a 100 to zero after just taking a bless shield but there came the root there came the silence and their dragon arrow for good measure and uh, man it's not a good day for Murden's they it's not the first game in which a Murden gets taken down surprisingly fast today is it Tetra? Yeah, they seem to be struggling so far as FS holding the line is in great trying to dissuade dissuade a great as uh, no is around the area. They're trying to scout him, but he's taking the other way around. Yeah. They have not ruffled him yet. The Nuts are playing very conservatively here, oh, but Bird yeah. is back in the fight. Oh. The X Strike comes through. The sleep was really good, and that's allowing them to pick up the kills here. We can see Rock trying to put some pressure onto Oasis here as finally FS goes down. Reset. And guess what? That's reset. Here comes one, and they're looking for no, no from behind though. Looking for the leaving, Woo! takes around. No more resets there. Genji being forced to back up. Sorry, Hanzo being forced to back up from Genji as Genji picks up Hanzo. Two members left the Decad Kane and the Valera. The Valera immediately turns around on the super greedy oh. Genji, who's trying to turn it around with the deflect, but the Decad Kane healing is too much. But he himself now is in a rough position. The Tyrael shielding keeps Genji alive, and the fight is not. Don't forget about Decker Kane, man. As long as he has one ally in his vicinity, he's going to get that 10 armor. He's going to get that crazy cooldown reduction. So I think Valir and Decker Kane could have actually probably won that team fight if uh, RPG hadn't been careful there. So without Li Ming, they lack a significant amount of damage on that Immortal, of course. But the fight was constantly back and forth. We get to see it actually in a replay segment here. So good. Uh, sleep, as you said, but then came the reset and then came the identification to basically keep the momentum going. Yeah, and you can see here, Hanzo had a pretty rough time. FS just got deleted, but that sank was beautiful. And mm -hmm. the fact is, Valera's in it. She just dives from the sanctification where they think they're safe directly onto Li Ming and picks up the kill. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it was just great. 
Great play by Team Nut, making the best out of that situation. Now, Oasis trying to chunk it down while the rest of Team Nut is trying to keep the enemies at bay. So RPG, they do have more members there to attack it. They do have significant damage as well. Look at Li Ming's positioning, by the way, from safety over the wall, using Disintegrate, using the magic missiles over and over and over again. Yep, trying to ping in the damage, and this almost certainly will be an immortal, but Dragon! Well, the sleep's good as they try to turn it around. Certification to survive as Valera and the Tui are dropped low as FS is zoning out Li Ming as MJ will get taken out in the back line. No is pushing forward, but might have been up on Nikachu as Zero turns around for the damage. But tanks it through. Two kills to zero. Yeah. Maybe three if they can get C, which they can't. But the Immortal, though, is now pushing against them. And that was satisfying, I think, for Team Net. I think that's not as much as they would have liked to, but definitely. Uh, a good amount of hero kills to keep this push under control. Although the mercenary camp, man, the fallen shamans already did a lot of work here. And it looks like RPG is not done yet. They're not willing to let this go down without at least a little bit of a fight. But Murdvin needs to be careful. He's fallen victim to those CC chains before. And I think he's gotten a lot of respect right now of the silence of the roots and the stuns coming in from Team Nut. Yep, can't blame him for that at all. But the keep survives. Li Ming is pinging in some damage. Not sure why he, somehow he took a tower shot, but <laughs> that tower will survive. That's tilting. Um, but either way, they're able to get out of there. He's able to get out of there nice and safely. Did some structure damage. They're working it up. And both teams, though, even on experience, both teams approaching level 20. Yeah, this is this probably... Come down to the next objective phase. Absolutely oh. true. They don't see no, yeah. but they suspected him to be there. He was in true stealth, but sometimes when you enter a bush and your movement is a little wonky, you know, you're getting a little body blocked out of nowhere, you can actually guess that there is a full invisible hero right now. And uh, you could really see the sweat drops starting to uh, gather on Valera's face there as the heroes were getting closer and closer. And she basically peaced out of there. It was too risky. But Tetra, I think that was the closest game we've had all day, isn't it? This is certainly the closest game we've had all day, as both teams, once again, continuing to build their way up towards that level 20. The objective's still quite a way off from, uh, from spawning. Difference is, Team Nut are double soaking. RPG are looking for kills. Alrighty then. RPG is trying to turn on the aggression. All they need is one pickup to secure themselves the next more. The countdown is live right now, 25 seconds. And we're getting closer to level 20. And I think that favors Team Nut a little more. Decker's level 20 power spike is really infamous. You have these everlasting healing potions. It's going to be so hard to really push them out of a defensive position. So if they want to make something happen, they maybe should have tried now. But look at Nut No Man. He's always there to find the enemy team's Muradin, to mess with him, causing a panic reaction there, and just be a nuisance for the enemy team. Here comes the Immortal. Neither team's at level 20. Both looking for any minions they can possibly find to get it. Genji will be able to get it for RPG. Team Nut. They're going to have the Electric LXP do it, and they do. So it's not too far behind. They begin working on the Immortal as well. Slight head start for RPG, and as such, they are actually starting a little Ooh. bit ahead. No Ace is not landing the Scatter Arrows as efficiently yeah. as I would like, but still he's getting the damage off. But the level 20s are now available. And we don't see the bottomless Flash Tetra. We see the upgraded um, Stay A While and Listen. So cooldown reduction. There we go. It's, it's, it's the silence as well, which is so mm -hmm. good on top of the blind. Whoa! Bye, Genji! Scatter Arrow good. Silence and blind comes out. That's rough sanctification, though, for the ability to try and turn that round as phase drop low. Down no he goes. Three cents for Li Ming to begin working on the damage as Tyrael is forced backwards in the sides and once again shields himself as Li Ming forced to back up. She can't do enough damage, even with the resets, to kill off FS. Yeah, and the potions, the potions are still there. Malfurion is starting to have a little bit of trouble keeping everybody safe and sound, but the potions are doing a really wonderful job there. Look at the damage coming in from Li Ming, but it's not enough against FS on the Johanna. He also has the level 20 available. He does have the indestructible, so I'm not sure if that is a target worth going for. Valera, sneaky Valera, she's level wow. 20, which means she does a lot of damage. And the Tyrrell explosion, though, onto a 2 EC is putting on the pressure in the danger. But in comes MJ, it runs into the Immortal Stone, and that's no such way. goodbye. You're just going to die to, to Decker, just something you can do about it. Yeah. Down you go, there's no chase. Lee Ming has fled, Chicken has abandoned it. There's the silence, consistent Beautiful. slows and silence coming in from no. Muradin will escape here, but that has easily bought Hanzo enough time to grab the Immortal.
Yeah, and it was so good for Muradin that he wasn't out of mana there because that would have been the kill 100%. We have endless poison for Valera at level 20. Uh, the Emirage does good. no longer expire as long as auto attacks are being delivered on the target. This could really ramp up for some insane damage. The bottom keep is protected here. That was the weak lane for Team Nut as well. And is this the time for them to try and finish? We're 23, 24 minutes into this game. The Immortals are scaling like crazy. If they get like one kill, it could all be the beginning of the end. But look at that damage. Look at the towers though. They're still there buying time, absorbing some of the damage. They can certainly try to end here. They're going to so try, damaged. but down goes the shield already. Li yep. Ming, so much poke potential here for the Immortal. It's true, it's true. Still over half health. Moving on to the key. And okay, moving on to the key. One hit is chunking away 10% of those structures. It's crazy. Can they get a kill though? No Valir engage up to this point. He's in the back lanes. They get a kill on the Turial. They hadn't had the uh, Sanctification ready oh, in time. No. Genji just hacked, just X strikes directly into the sleeper, got put to sleep. Oh he got slept my. and silenced and deleted there. That might be all they need with two members down. Unless Li Ming could just absolutely pop off, that it looks like yeah. Nut might be taking this. They're looking for Faye. She, he is the best target to start the reset trade. Chicken moving forward. The core is beginning to go down. Faye is low. Down goes Muradin. This is the last chance for them to try and save this, but the core is dropping down. Chicken has nothing left, and that is GG. And Team Nut take the 2 0 and the full three points. Absolutely amazing display by them in RPG. They just couldn't crack the nut this time. It was too tough. It was too hard. Uh, but yeah, I got to say, I really liked what Team Nut brought to the table here. Fantastic display. The CC chains were executed almost perfectly every single time. We saw glorious Hanzo arrows actually, Tetcher. And I think everybody on the side of Team Nut showed their absolute A game completely agree that was super nicely played the valera a little bit more passive than valera as we've seen before the but the impact yeah. was super great hanzo maybe not as much race potential as we would have hoped but the team fight potential just detonating genji with one of those scatter arrows was super nice and he kept himself relatively safe i'm 